A great way to understand the golden ratio is to build the golden rectangle. I'll build the rectangle inside to out using the Fibonacci sequence. Then from there, I'll add the spiral, circles, and phi grid. And yes, I will explain the difference between all of these. If you don't want to build this in Adobe Illustrator, you can follow along with graph paper. I created an Illustrator file with the pixel dimensions of 1000 by 700. The grid feature is a fantastic tool for this experiment. Under the view drop down, you can show and hide the grid. We also have the option to change the grid specifications under Illustrator settings. I set my guides and grids to 50 pixels for grid lines with a subdivision of five. This setting makes the math of the golden rectangle easier to understand. Now that we've done that, let's get our rectangle tool and also check snap to grid under the view drop down. Now when I draw my square, it will snap right into place on the grid. I start with the smallest square. I like to have my properties panel open to verify the pixel dimensions. While here, I will actually modify my stroke and fill properties. I'll take my stroke weight down to 0.5 and make sure it is aligned to the inside. Then I'll select none for my fill. Now let's copy and paste that square and move it up one grid box. I'll use my arrow keys a lot for this, but we can click on the stroke path to move our squares as well. Copy and paste again. I am using keyboard shortcuts now and move it to the left. Holding down the shift key to keep the perfect square proportion, I will extend the square out to here. I can double check in the properties panel to make sure it's 20 by 20 pixels and it sure is. We will keep creating new squares in this spiral pattern as so. I need to zoom out for the next four squares. With each new square, we have a complete golden rectangle. I'll keep going until I fill my page. At this point, I need to rotate to fit one more square. So I'll zoom out and click on the rotate tool to rotate by 90 degrees. Move it to the right side and now I can draw my last square and then center it. At any time, we can use the shortcut command apostrophe to show and hide the grid. If you count the width of each square, the Fibonacci sequence presents itself. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. It starts with zero or one, and the sequence continues indefinitely. Now take a look at the width of each square I just created. There's our Fibonacci sequence. So let's back up and discuss the golden ratio. It's a composition tool that is fundamental to the Fibonacci spiral. These composition devices are meant to lead the viewer through an artwork in a pleasing and balanced way. The golden ratio is deeply rooted in history and math. Represented by the Greek letter phi, the ratio is approximately 1.618 to one. Many believe the Egyptians used it when they built the pyramids and that it's found in famous artworks such as the Mona Lisa. It is stated that it often appears in nature and in human anatomy, particularly within the proportions of fingers, limbs, and facial features. It is important to note that many scholars have disputed these claims, and some think there is no basis to the golden ratio producing more pleasing artworks. Let's continue building out our golden rectangle, first with the phi grid. I am going to start organizing my layers panel by grouping my squares together, adding a new layer for my phi grid lines, and locking the squares layer to avoid moving those by mistake. With the line tool selected, I'll draw two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, placing them in this manner. The placement of these lines are determined by the existing line here and then extending out this line. Then we mirror those line placements on the other side, thus completing our phi grid. You may notice it looks a lot like the rule of thirds. The difference is that we're not dividing the frame into equal thirds, that one to one to one ratio. Instead, the phi grid consists of a one to 0 0.618 to one ratio. The center lines are closer together in the phi grid. The main difference here is that your subject or focal points are positioned a bit more centrally. Let's create our golden circles next. I'll create a new layer for those and hide my lines layer. All we are doing here is drawing perfect circles inside of each square. The circle diameter should match the square widths. I am checking the dimensions in my properties panel as I go to ensure that. Here is what our circles look like when you hide the rectangle. 
The golden circles are super fun building blocks for shape building. A great example of this is the old Twitter logo. The bird is made entirely out of golden circles, meaning circles and circle arcs that maintain a golden ratio to one another. The process is to overlay as many circles as needed in the predetermined sizes, and then combine and delete sections as needed. You are almost certainly guaranteed a pleasing creation. Now onto the golden spiral, also known as the Fibonacci spiral. The spiral is created by placing arcs in each square. I'll do this by creating circles first and then cutting the line path to one fourth of a circle. There's an easy math equation to create the correct size circles. Each circle ratio will be the width of its corresponding square. So the 20 pixel width of this square gives us a circle with a 40 pixel diameter. With the circle tool, I will click once and type in the dimensions of 40 by 40 pixels. Then I will move it so that one fourth of the circle is lined up over the 20 by 20 pixel square. Now I will copy and paste to create my next circle. Because the next square is 30 pixels wide, I know that my circle needs to be 60 pixels wide. I can change that right in my properties panel, then move it in place. I am creating all of my circles first, and then I will cut them down to the arcs. My next circle needs to be 100 pixels wide for the 50 pixel width of the square. Notice the cool circle pattern is beginning to make, one of the many patterns we discover with the golden formula. My next circle needs to be 160 pixels wide to place over the 80 pixel width square. The next circle needs to be 260 pixels wide. You can of course click and drag to make circles and line them up as you go if you prefer. For me, I find this to be faster. And if you are drawing by hand, you can achieve the same results with a compass. The remaining circle diameters will be 420 pixels, 680 pixels, and 1100 pixels. To recap, the simple formula for these circles is circle diameter equals width of corresponding square multiplied by two. Let's take a second to appreciate the nature inspired composition this created. Okay, now let's cut it up. I'll start with the largest circle and work my way in. With my circle selected, I will get the scissors tool. It's under the eraser tool if you don't see it. Then I will click on these two anchor points to cut. It will look like nothing happened, but it did. Your single circle path has been cut into two paths. I can click on the part I don't want and delete it. And there's the arc we want. Let's keep going. Notice where I am clipping. I will pull the unwanted piece away first, just so that you can see that it is now separated, and then I will delete it. Repeat this process by selecting the next circle, clipping at the anchor points to get your arc, and delete the other piece. I am toggling back and forth from the select tool and the scissors tool. Keyboard shortcuts V and C will make your life much easier. And now to the last one. You could create an arc for the smallest square too, I usually do. Now we can see our beautiful Fibonacci spiral. If you followed along with me, you just created a valuable golden template that you can always refer to when creating your digital artwork. Last thing, you might be interested in a shortcut for those golden circles we created, the ones that built out the old Twitter logo. You can of course build them out like we just did, copy all of them and make sure you scale them as a group so that they don't lose that all important ratio. Or do this. It's fast and gets you super close to the proportions. I say super close because even though I have been referring to the decimal number 1.618, be aware that it's actually an irrational number. It is 1.618033988749894 onto infinity. You can see why we shorten it to 1.618. Okay, so here's the shortcut. With the ellipse tool, click once and enter 55 by 55 pixels. I'm using a Fibonacci sequence number to demonstrate. Now get the scale tool, which lives underneath the rotate tool. It's faster to use the shortcut S and then your enter key. In this window, we enter 100% divided by, use the forward slash, 1.618. Do not click OK because we want to copy, not replace. Click copy and we can now see our second circle. Look over at the properties panel and you will see how close this is to 34, another Fibonacci number. 
If you want to quickly make more circles, use the shortcut command or control D to repeat all golden circles. If you want to make a bigger circle, multiply instead of divide. In my scale window, I will type 100% asterisk for multiply 1.618, then click copy. The new circle is super close to 89, a Fibonacci number. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it with a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be sure to catch my newest tutorials. And of course, it is always appreciated if you want to buy me a coffee as a way of supporting my efforts to keep these tutorials coming. That link is in the description below.